box. Dad, what, Dad, what, what? my headset won't charge. What? No other YouTuber has to put up with this. What's wrong? The headset won't charge when plugged in with a USB cable. Right. I'll fix that in another video. Okay, what are these headphones? They look well worn out. What are they, Alex? Um, they are Turtle Beach 520 headphones. Right, they really don't look in very good condition. Uh, and you plug them in where? That? Yes. And is that USB-C or micro USB? Micro USB. Right. So, and what's your problem? Does it work at all, or sometimes, or? You have to wiggle it about. Do you? Now, if we're lucky, then, the socket's just desoldered from the board. If we're unlucky, the socket's worn out, and that could be a bit harder to fix. Uh, also, if we're lucky, we can get it apart. So, typically, you would take the pads off. You know, you need to order new ones of these from somewhere. These are well past it. This is fantastic screwdriver kit, this. It was actually bought for me by one of my YouTube viewers. It just arrived one day and, ah, it's just wonderful. I think I was trying to dismantle a micro MV tape, a camcorder tape, and I didn't have the right screwdriver. And then this arrived as a gift. Ah, yes, I have worked on them before. I can see I had to replace the button. Is that the mute button or something like that? Uh, yeah, that would be the mute button. Right, and it looks like the original one died and I glued in position uh, a different switch. Uh, that was a long time ago, I suspect, wasn't it? Yeah, because I can't remember it. <laughs> Micro USB port, which is that one. So let's get that under the microscope. Looking at it, you know, the socket to the PCB looks good, but the socket to the plug is a mess, isn't it? It's very sloppy and it seems like, yes, some of the metal work on the top of the socket. On one pin it's barely in place and on the other pin it's not in place at all. See? So the plug is just falling out. So do you find if you can if you push the plug in like that, Alex, that it makes contact? In a very specific way, yeah. Well, we need to replace the socket, that's for certain. Okay. That could be tricky. Uh, what can I do as a workaround? I may be able to crush the socket down slightly, but the clasps on both ends have completely disintegrated. One of them's just dust and the other one doesn't even exist at all. I can't, can't push it down any further, or the risk is that the plug will go in over the top. You see what I'm doing, Alex? Yeah. If I push it down any further, the plug could go over the top of that metal. It's a little bit more stable like that. It's definitely a bit more stable. I'm thinking whether I could f mount a new socket on the outside, but it'll be dangling forever. It's not certain that that's replaceable, that socket. You're going to have to probably look into getting a new socket. Getting a new socket is all you can do. Or if we can't get a new socket I'll have to see if we can get a USB, micro USB extension socket. I've never seen one and mount it on the outside. It does sound horrible. Maybe it's just end of life, you know. So here we are a few days later. I had uh, briefly reassembled the headphones while I waited for the parts to arrive. So I have here some uh, micro USB sockets, which hopefully will be compatible with what's on there. The tricky bit, I think, is going to be getting that one off. Uh, so let's take it apart and see what we can do. So here is a replacement switch I'd fitted years ago for the mute button because the original one had fallen apart or died. Uh, now, I need to replace the socket. I'm inclined when I'm working on this to have the battery unplugged from the safety point of view. So there's the socket we need to replace. Let's have a look at our new ones. I've got Mangle trying to get out the packaging. So there's our original and here is our replacement. Oh dear. Is it the same? 
So the original has all the pads going straight down to the bottom and the replacement has them in this kind of stepped pattern. Are they otherwise compatible? They are somewhat different beasts but if I mount it the same way round and get all those pins down towards the PCB would it would it work? It's not going to be much fun but uh, we have little choice so our first task is going to be getting this defective one off the board. I've been thinking about using a hot air gun but I think there's a hazard of uh, well overheating the board and blowing other parts off. Desolder wick isn't going to help because that would only get the solder off this side of the board and not the other side. I'm thinking of putting a small screwdriver in here, applying some pressure and then desoldering here and I'm hoping that it will lift off the board leaving the pads still on and I can desolder those later. Apply some pressure with the screwdriver and then desolder. Let's give that a whirl. Struggling with that. Um, I wonder if I can cut the metal prongs off this where it's soldered onto the board. I suspect not. It's just so difficult. And cutters just look monstrous when looking at it in this scale, but maybe I could just cut the side of the solder there. Maybe I can cut the socket apart. Okay, that has actually worked. I've managed to remove the old socket. I didn't have to desolder it because uh, I think it had already desoldered itself. Now, can I get rid of these metal pieces or maybe I don't need to. Let's have a look at the replacement socket. It has to go that way round. Am I going to run into difficulties with it sticking out too far from the board? Here's the old one, and when it was in place, it stuck out a certain distance from the board. The new one may be a bit further, and the other difficulty is how am I going to secure it onto the board? And how am I going to solder it onto the board? Do these old tabs, these old four tabs, need to come off from the old socket? That should be reasonably possible now, but not simple. My difficulty is, I think, do I try to secure the socket onto the board and then solder the connections, or solder the connections and then secure the socket? <laughs> Neither seem to be terribly easy. Really, the connections are the fiddliest, so I'd be inclined to do those first. But I think I would break one connection while trying to do another if I don't secure it first. So I'm going to have to solder it into place and then do the connections. I just don't have any choice. All right, one problem is I don't have enough hands because I keep trying to secure the board. So I'm going to see if I can um, mount the board on a clamp. Okay, that has the board reasonably secure. So now I can put the socket on there and work on it. We have a better view of it now and it's mounted on this clamp. We can see the, see the new socket on the top there. So I just need to solder, just need to solder some of the remains of the old tabs onto the body of the new socket just to hold it in place while I'm working on it. Now I can solder a bit more and hopefully get the socket reasonably secure. Getting there, somewhat struggling with the uh, volume control being in the way. I can't easily take it off and it's going to want to melt. 
Okay, now we only, only have the difficulty of soldering these five incredibly small wires which aren't even at the correct height. So I'm going to push them down onto the PCB and then solder them with an extremely fine soldering iron. With this I need to rotate the board so I can really see in the correct sort of 3D plane the uh, soldering I'm trying to do. Right, I think we can see what we're trying to do now. So we have three along the top and two along the bottom that need to be pushed down to meet these lands on the PCB. Wow. Okay, they will just about reach. I think I'll do these first two and then do the others later. I think if I push them all down, I might uh, make my life harder. I'm going to use different soldering iron for this. Well, here goes for the first connection. I'm going to start with pin five. The trouble with it is with this sort of thing, it looks so easy under the microscope, but in reality it's really difficult. Okay, we're going to cross two pins. Pin 4 is definitely soldered on OK. Pin 5? Yes. Both look good. Well, we've done it for those two pins, so we know we can do it for the remaining three. It's just going to be uh, hard. Have some finer solder. Let's give that a whirl. I think we've got that. Okay, so let's do pin two. Right, one pin to do. Just pin one now, which hopefully shouldn't be the hardest. I have a bit more room than some of the others. What do you think? You reckon we've got all those? I think we have them all, don't we? Let's give them a quick prod, make sure nothing looks loose. Pin one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I think we have soldered that in place. Uh, let's see if we can secure the socket a little bit more. Alex, what do we have here? Cable. Right, so this is what kind of cable? Micro USB. Right, let's plug it into a USB charger. And what sound should this make? Or Charging should... battery. Okay. Let's uh, hope that happens and something doesn't spark. Oh, you know what I've done? I've unplugged the battery, haven't I? <laughs> right, so I need to reconnect the uh, internal battery first. Let's uh, reconnect the internal battery first then. Difficult. And here's our new socket but it's not that well secured on the board as it stands. It is secured, but not as well as the original, so that is a difficulty. Right, the narrow side is towards the PCB, so that way around, I think. Plug it in and see what we get. Should something have happened? So, have I, in all the manhandling, broken something else or had something else unplug. Everything looks okay. Let's uh, refit the circuit board a little bit. There's also the question about whether the socket will line up with the cutout on the headphone because it's subtly different than the original. Yeah, that is going to be a problem. Getting the, the new socket to sit in the housing for the old one because it sticks further forward slightly. Yeah, have to tackle that problem later. Uh, we may need to try a different charger and cable. Do you have a different cable? Oh, blue. We have blue light. Oh my god. Uh, no, not on YouTube. Really? 
Really? You can't say, oh my god, on YouTube? No, I don't want gods, no. Right, that's promising. Let's try to... Res okay, you hold on to that a minute. So, our problem is that this plastic here is just slightly fouling on the input socket there. So I need to widen that slightly. But in a way that's a good thing because that will provide some more mechanical stability for it. Brute force at its finest. Wouldn't that make it easier for the, the cable to fall out though? No, no, I'm elongating it. It would help if I could unplug the speaker. I could desolder it, I suppose. Yeah, I'm going to desolder the speaker. Okay, I'll abbreviate a little bit here. Um, I applied some epoxy resin to uh, provide some extra strength for the socket, but during testing it actually partly broke free and I had to do some more repair work, which I won't bore you with. Uh, but suffice to say that we did get the socket properly fitted in the end. What do you think, Alex? It's perfect. Well, it isn't. It's very delicate because uh, it's held in at least partly by glue. It's nowhere near as uh, strong as the original was. So you promised me you'd be super careful with it. I promise. Oh, God, it's too fast. Down there? Down there? Yeah, this is working. Okay, so the socket is fitted and working. But uh, was it a great job? No, because the original socket had... Uh, metal pins that went down through the PCB. I couldn't get those out uh, once I'd cut them free. Um, I suspect they must have been a very tight fit on the PCB because even when the solder was molten they just weren't going anywhere. So unfortunately I had to solder the remains of those pins to the new socket and that was nowhere near as strong as the original design. So what could I have done? If I'd been able to get those pins out perhaps I could have put a piece of copper, a copper loop or two around the socket anchoring it to the PCB. That would have been stronger if I'd been able to get those uh, broken pins out. Uh, but as it is, I've just warned young Alex to be uh, very careful with his headphones. And these have now been in use for several days and the socket is working fine. So we got there. Other solutions might have been to get a uh, USB socket of some sort on a cable, an inline one, and have it hanging out of here, soldered onto the board. That might have been a better solution, albeit it would have been rather ugly. Right, I hope you've enjoyed what we did here. I certainly didn't enjoy doing it. I don't want to do any more jobs like this for a while. I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology and a few other things shortly. Bye for now.